Children, learning new words for a language is very important. I would like to share with you a few new words now. We will come across these words in the chapter that we will be reading today. I would like you to note down these words and when we come across them in the lesson, please try to guess their meaning. First word. Unfamiliar, unfamiliar, unfamiliar. Second word, pronunciation, pronunciation, pronunciation. Third word, visual, visual, visual. Fourth word, encyclopedia, encyclopedia, encyclopedia. Fifth word, fret, fret, fret. Children, we spoke a lot today about the process of learning a language and the challenges, the problems we face. But how learning a language can be a very exciting and a fun process. Children, on that note, let us read a small poem. Please open to page number 26. Why is English so hard? We will be reading this poem together. Children, if you have a textbook, please point to the words as I read. And if you don't have a textbook, please listen to me carefully. Come, let's read this poem together. Children, come, let's read the poem now. Children, what is it that you see here? This is one box and these one, two, three, four, five are boxes. What is this animal here? This animal is called an ox and these Four together are called oxen. Why English is so hard? We'll begin with a box and the plural is boxes. But the plural of ox should be oxen, not oxes. So children, when we talk about one single box, it's called a box. But when there are many, we call them boxes. When there is one, we call it an ox. When there are many, we call them oxen. Okay, what do we see here? 
we see that this is a house and these are houses. We see that this is a mouse and these are mice. You may find a lone mouse or a whole lot of mice, but the plural of a house is houses, not heist. The poet says, this one is a mouse. All of these together are called mice. This one here is a house and all of these together are houses. Okay children, what is it that you see here? This is a man. And these are men. This is a pan. And these are pans. This is a little boy who looks confused here. Let's read to find out why. If the plural of man is always called men. Why shouldn't the plural of pan be called pen? So this boy's confusion is that when the plural of one man is called men, then why the plural of a pan is not called pen, but it is called, what is it called? The plural of pan is pans. What is it that you see here? Here again is a little boy. And the little boy is holding boots in his hands. What is the little boy thinking? Come, let's read. And I speak of a foot. And you show me your feet. But I give you a boot. Would a pair be called beat? Here the boy wonders that if one single foot is called foot and the plural of foot is feet, then why is a pair of boots called boots but not beat? Children, what is it that you see here? Here you see hats. That one may be that and three may be those, yet the plural of hat would never be hose. The poet says that this single one here is a hat. And all these four together are called hats. This is a boy. 
This is a girl. The masculine pronouns are he, his and him. But imagine the feminine she, shes and shim. For boys, we use the masculine pronouns. Pronouns are words used instead of the noun. The masculine pronouns are he, his and him. For girls, we use the feminine pronouns that are she, her and her. This is another boy. Come, let's read what he has to say. So, our English, I think, you will all agree, is the trickiest language you ever did see. So, this boy summarizes the poem saying that English is a very tricky language. Children, I hope you all found the poem Why English is so hard, fun and interesting. Children, please open to page number 23 of your textbooks. We will be reading the lesson in the world of dictionaries. Please point to the words as I read. If you don't have a textbook, please listen to me carefully. In the world of dictionaries, we often come across words that are unfamiliar to us. When we read books, newspapers or magazines. We also hear new words and phrases when we watch TV programs. How do we find the meanings of these words? In the classroom, the teacher is always available to the students to tell the meaning of new and difficult words. But she cannot accompany every student all the time to explain the meaning of every new word. Besides, grown-up people also need help in this respect. A language has hundreds of thousands of words in it. It is impossible for one person to know all of them. But all these words can be explained in a dictionary. A language has thousands of words and it is not possible for one person to know the meaning of all the words. That is why a dictionary is made. The dictionary is a book which has the meaning of thousands of words in it. A child to an adult, anyone can refer to the dictionary and find the meaning of the words that they are looking for. At some time or other, you must have been advised to look up a word in a dictionary by your teacher or parents. Let us now see what the word dictionary means. Given below are some examples of how the word might be explained in different dictionaries. 
dictionary. It's a noun. It's a book in which words are listed in alphabetical order from A to Z. You look up a word in a dictionary to find out what it means and how to spell it. Dictionary. The plural is dictionaries. A book that gives a list of words in alphabetical order and explains their meanings in the same language or another language. Second, a book that explains words used in a subject. Words in a dictionary are usually arranged in alphabetical order. A dictionary tells us what a word means. A dictionary shows us how a word is spelled. A dictionary tells us how a word is pronounced. A dictionary shows us the different forms of the same word. For example, rose, roses, go, going, went, gone, etc. Bacho, dictionary se hume pata chalta hai ke har ek shabd ko kis tarike se likha jata hai, uska arth kya hai, usse bola kaise jata hai, aur us shabd ke anya prakar bhi bataye jate hai. A dictionary tells us with the help of examples how a word is used. A dictionary lists many other words, phrases related to that word. A dictionary points out the different meanings of words which have the same spelling. A dictionary also tells us the grammatical class to which a word belongs. You will learn about these classes of words when you are a little older. All dictionaries, however, are not the same. Depending on who is going to use the dictionary, the information in it is arranged and presented in different ways. Do you know that there are different types of dictionaries? Let us look at a few of them. Children's dictionaries. Some dictionaries are designed specially for children. They include only a few thousand words. But there are many pictures and diagrams in children's dictionaries. There may also be word games, puzzles and jokes based on the meaning or use of words. Pronouncing dictionaries. Some dictionaries provide only the pronunciation of words. It is shown with the help of special symbols. Dictionaries of synonyms. Some dictionaries give lists of synonyms. Words which have a similar meaning. They may also include antonyms or opposites. Dictionary of synonyms. Synonyms means words with same meanings. This dictionary also has antonyms. Antonyms means 
words with opposite meaning. Visual dictionaries. Some dictionaries contain only visuals or pictures. They do not have to explain the meaning in words. They are all labeled. See the simple visual given alongside. In the same way, even complicated machines or systems are made simple in a visual dictionary. Children, in a visual dictionary, there are lots and lots of pictures. There are so many pictures that words are not needed to explain. But cho, visual dictionary mein bohat sari tasweero ki madad se shabdo ke arth samjhaye jate hain. The parts of a plant have been labeled. Just this is enough for us to understand the meaning of the different words. Encyclopedic Dictionaries Encyclopedias are books that give a lot of information on a great number of topics. Encyclopedic dictionaries too give a lot more information about most of the words they contain. These dictionaries are usually quite thick and contain many more words than the smaller ordinary dictionaries. Have you heard about encyclopedias? Encyclopedias are books with lots of information on lots of topics. Just like that, encyclopedic dictionaries have the meanings of many words and explain each word in detail. Computers and the internet have brought with them online dictionaries. They are very easy to use. You just type the word you want to look up and instantly you are shown its meaning, use, etc. You can even listen to the proper pronunciation of a word. A printed dictionary cannot do this. The computers and internet have brought the online dictionary. You only have to type out the word that you are searching for. You will get the meaning, the use of the word and lots of more information. You will also get the pronunciation of the word. This is a lot more than what an ordinary dictionary can do. There are some dictionaries that tell us how a word was spelt hundreds of years ago what its meaning was back then and what the word is today and what is its meaning. A dictionary is a must for a student. You can begin with simple attractive dictionaries and then learn to use the more difficult ones later. So, the next time you come across a difficult word, don't fret, just look it up in a dictionary. Children, a dictionary can be your best friend. If you have a dictionary, please make sure to carry it to school or whenever you are going to read. You can make your own dictionary. Write the meaning and other information about the words you plan to include in your dictionary on cards of the same size. Use a separate card for each word. Arrange the cards in 
alphabetical order. Your dictionary is ready. Moreover, you can add new words to this dictionary whenever you like. Children, I hope you all liked the poem on English and the lesson on dictionaries. Children, till we meet next time. Please take care. Bye bye and stay safe.